Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the second webinar in the series for the Going All Out for Outreach Micro-Credentialing Program. This webinar is focusing on the micro-credential upskilling. Uh, before I begin, I would like to acknowledge The tradition, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners or traditional custodians of the land upon which we work and live and recognise their continuing connection to the land, water and community. Um, I would like to pay respects to elders past and present and future leaders, acknowledging that uh, many of us are on different countries throughout Queensland and I would also pay respects to the elders past, present and future of those different lands. So going all out for outreach, what is it? It's a micro-credentialing program designed to address a range of rural and remote healthcare workforce issues in Queensland. Its overarching aim is to ensure health providers have the skills and knowledge they need to respond to the complexity of outreach work, provide relevant upskilling to their local workforce, and to create a positive learning environment for students on work experience and clinical placement. For host facilities, the micro-credentials cover the essentials for effectively hosting a visiting health provider. Today we're going to be focusing on the second of the three aims, which is providing relevant upskilling to the local workforce. So the program has four key objectives. To enhance outreach health service delivery with a focus on local solutions to ensure timely local responses in the health and remote health workforce, in the rural and remote health workforce, by delivering training to assist health providers to work at top of scope and to improve quality of care by promoting multidisciplinary teams-based models. Three, to address the maldistribution of the health workforce in Queensland by increasing the attraction and retention of health professions, professionals and assistants in rural and remote locations. And four, to improve the efficiency of facilities hosting visiting outreach providers. The program has been funded under the Department of Employment Small Business and Training Micro-Credentialing Program. It is designed to develop and developed with the oversight of an industry-based steering committee. Members of this committee include its key stakeholders and experts in rural and remote health, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health, and the outreach model. Steering committee members provided input into the content and design of the micro-credentials. Industry working groups were also set up for each micro-credential with members of these groups providing content, ideas and regular feedback throughout their development. The upskilling micro-credential aims to support skill development in the remote and rural health workforce to deliver services that help clients and communities achieve the best possible health outcomes. It is for both individuals and host organisations wanting to know more about effective upskilling and how to apply this knowledge at an individual team, organisational or community level. The learning outcomes from this um, micro-credential will, will ensure participants, participants are able to conduct a skills gaps analysis for a facility or community or with an individual. Mentor learners to develop their skills and knowledge and achieve their learning goals. Apply the principles of adult learning when supporting learners. Support clients to develop the skills to confidently engage with telehealth services. Understand the importance of health literacy in effective health outcomes. Contribute to the development of appropriate health resources that are respectful of individual and community health literacy levels and support individuals to develop good health literacy to improve, improve health outcomes. So I am going to now go to the actual micro-credential and take you through some of the fe uh, features of the micro-credential. Just let me find it and we will jump into it in just a second.
I'm just going to move this over here so that we can all see it. So this is micro-credential two. Each of the micro-credentials are set out in a similar way. You'll see um, that we have an introduction explaining the reasoning behind the micro-credential and outlining the learning outcomes that will be achieved through doing this micro-credential. There is a workbook that can be downloaded uh, and it's a PDF workbook that can be filled in and online. So the workbook actually has a, a number of activities through it. And this the learner gets to keep and work their way through. On the left hand side is a, a menu bar um, which outlines all the different sections within the micro-credential. When you start working through it, you can only go, um, you must complete each section before you can move to the next one. But as we're going through this, this time we can, I can just skip through it. So just to give you an idea of some of the different things that are in here, we have a little bit about checkup. We have a little bit about what we do. As you move through, you move to the next section by clicking continue. Uh, we have these, uh, I'm not really sure what they're called, but you can click on each one of these uh, drop downs and it will tell you a bit more about the different programs. For example, the different programs that CheckUp uh, are funded to, to support. Now, in this particular module, there are this particular micro credential, there are six modules. The first module covers the principles of upskilling, and really it's it's not going to teach, it's not turning somebody into an accredited trainer. Rather, it is providing people with the skills to understand the process of upskilling. Or the, and the principles of upskilling so that they can better support learners in the workplace. It's not about um, replacing the role of the trainer uh, that might be provided by the training organisation or by the university or um, even the teacher within a school when you've got works, uh, work placement students coming. There is a learning map at the beginning of each module which shows you where you are on the learning journey towards um, finishing the micro-credential. So we have a diff provide various different bits of information for people as they go through. And we have some animations such as this one where you can click on the arrows and it shows you uh, and gives you a description of each step in the upskilling process. And then there's a short quiz at the end of the module. In this case, I think all four are correct. Well, I should know because I've done it so often. Yes, I was correct. So, as well as the um, multiple choice answers, there's also um, information such as this. So you, to do this one, you just match pairs. No, I think it might be that one.
might be fairly easy. Let's see. I probably didn't get them all right. Oh, I did. I surprised myself sometimes. So to pass, you have to get 80% um, to be able to move on to the next, next um, module. And here is an animation of how to undertake or the importance of undertaking a skills gap analysis. That's an example of one of the animations um, that is used to provide information. There are also little boxes, as you saw in the previous one, which gives you some um, advice from an employer's point of view of why you would do something. Again, we have these um, flashcards which take you through each of the steps in the process and gives you a scenario. And then down here um, is a downloadable template of what a, uh, an example of a skills gaps analysis. And here we've done that educate, diabetes education support skill get skills gaps analysis. We've actually put in a number of skills that would be considered to be um, we've got some typos in here, we might need to have to fix that up, uh, that the person might need to have and how important they are for the person to have those skills. skills. So that will then gives you um, an idea of, of what you're looking for. And then we provide a template which you can then use to develop your own skills gaps analysis. And you can do it for an individual or a team. We also have a workbook activity. Um, so here we go. You're, you're asked to undertake a analysis a skills gap analysis for your workplace using the process, finding out and identifying um, and answering some of these questions. So this is a reflective process say, to see how much um, the learner has picked up from what they've been doing. Adult learning principles is the next module. Again, um, it follows very much a similar pathway. There are a number of um, cards with information on them, some workbook activities, a specific points. And then there's an uh, we go on to look at um, mentoring. So at this stage, is there anybody that would like to ask any questions? If so, you know, feel free to do so. Mentoring is a very um, important skill to have in a workforce, regardless of whether um, you're working with um, upskilling people or working with learners, even mentoring somebody uh, in their own role or into a higher level role is always an important skill. Again, workbook activities, um, 
various things. Now we've got some um, flashcards or flip cards. So, and this explains how you can use the mentoring um, activities you can do to encourage or support a mentee, a person being mentored. Excuse me, Jane. Mm -hmm. um, how often do you recommend mentoring takes place? Do you think every it's, week or every month? Or? It's very much up to the individual you're mentoring. Um, it's not like supervision so it's not a constant thing that you do but you would work with the person that you're mentoring to set up a schedule that works for both of you and mm -hmm. and it might be that you get together once a week or once a fortnight to discuss how they're progressing with their learning find out what issues they're having anything like that so it's Mentoring is often a learner-driven or a mentee-driven process rather than, than a mentor-driven process. So it's it's about um, supporting the learner, but the learner must be the one that's driving that support and coming to you for support. So, I mean, I've mentored somebody who only met with me, I think, three times during the six months that I was mentoring her because she was quite capable and able. But she'd set up a meeting with me when she ran into something that she felt she really wasn't quite getting or um, there was a situation in the workplace that was not that she was a little bit uncomfortable with or something like that. So she used to reach out when she felt she needed a little bit of extra support. So it it's very much driven by the person being mentored. Okay, thank you. So probably at the beginning of the process is when you would uh, mentor somebody uh, or provide the most support. So achieving learning goals, you know, a lot of people fail to achieve um, or complete courses because they get overwhelmed by what they, they have to do. So setting learning goals enables them to break it down into bite size or achievable chunks and have something definite that they can go at the end of the process and go, well, hey, I really did that at this particular point. So I, all I have to do is this little bit and then we'll have a look again. And so setting learning goals is a very important part and that starts at the very early part of the learning um, journey. So you set your goals. In some ways, learning outcomes that are provided at the beginning of a, a module like this will help um, the learner to set their learning goals. So having the big picture goals for what they want to do and achieve by the end of it is great. But having smaller goals that say by the end of week one, I will have done module one and completed my workbook for that module is is something and then they've got something to measure their progress by without feeling like they've got to do a whole heap and it also enables them to go well actually my first week on this has been absolutely awful and I've been so busy and I just haven't had time to get there so can we readjust our learning goals and that's where your support as the mentor comes in in helping them to do that so here we're talking about SMET. Um, SMART goals and what they are. So SMART is an, a an acronym. Sorry, a bit hard to say. And these are some other ways that besides setting SMART goals, this is how you can help them to achieve their goals. So all, all the way throughout these, um, the micro-credential and the modules, you'll find tips and things to help you um, support a learner in particularly in this one and to achieve their goals it's it's not about pushing somebody or driving them but just supporting and being there uh, to help them when they're getting stuck or to answer questions when they're not sure all those sort of things so again, we've got a workbook activity. The workbook activity is a reflective workbook activity. So this is where we are asking you um, as the, the learner, as the person undertaking this particular micro-credential, to think about a time when you've been, you know, 
receiving feedback or giving feedback and it didn't work and then another time when it did work and what was the difference between them and how could it be done better so that's some of the things that you can to work on again another quiz so this actually yeah as it says it's focused mentoring is focused on the learner it considers the learner's strengths and needs it's um, intentional and individualized it promotes career focused learning and development and it evolves over time so as you go into um, supporting a learner you may find that how you support them changes as the person's needs change Now, telehealth is a big um, part of rural and remote health practice and many clients um, that you will work with may struggle uh, to engage with telehealth. So part of um, the service that you provide can be around helping them to um, be confident to use telehealth services. So this this particular module focuses on giving you the skills to be to be able to develop that confidence in your clients around telehealth. And again, we have another little um, animation. So in this one, this is a slightly different type of animation where we have little icons and when you click on them, it pops up with a bit of information. So this is another um, way of presenting information. You'll see throughout we have um, highlighted areas like this. So you can click on that link and it will take you to um, extra information. So it's not compulsory to read this information, but it's a really good idea to have a look at it and maybe save the link to read at a later time, if you haven't got time to read it at the time. Now, as a as a clinician um, or a host facility, you may be aware of you know the, the low engagement within your organisation in telehealth appointments and the, the number of people that actually don't um, attend their telehealth appointment. And this gives you just some of the reasons why uh, people may may be struggling to maintain telehealth. Um, appointments so we've got we've we've broken it down into the different sections so the different areas in which um, a person may need support which ranges from setting up the appointment and here we we talk about some of the ways in which you as a clinician or a, a host organization um, or a practice manager can support them to actually uh, follow through and you know set up an appointment and be aware of all the issues that could possibly arise while they're doing it and then we go on to talk about 
during the appointment, some of the issues that could rise, um, and the importance of communication. Communicating in a virtual environment is much more much more difficult than in a face-to-face uh, -face environment where, and one of the biggest difficulties is around um, the non-verbal communication, you know, the facial expressions, the body language, um, although the tone of voice quite often gets distorted and lost in a virtual communication environment. So all these things can... Um, can impede the um, effectiveness of a telehealth appointment. So another workbook activity to complete this little section and then a quiz. Again, it's just a, a Checklist. Uh, we're, nearly, we're nearly finished. So this is the um, understanding about health literacy and supporting health literacy for individuals. So this is another important, one of the reasons that um, you may experience um, people not coming for their appointments, not just on telehealth, but also their face-to-face -face appointments, maybe be, or um, having poor outcomes following their appointments, maybe around their their um, um, lack of health literacy or understanding of, of health. Um, and health literacy, I'll go on and show you, but we define health literacy. And we use a video here which talks through what health literacy is all about. Jane, I'm not able to hear the video. Excuse me, Jane. Hey, I'm not able to hear the video. Yes. I'm, I can't hear the video. You can't hear the video? No. Okay. Oh, I wonder why. Can you hear it? Yeah, I can hear it. So I'm wondering why, it. whether there's something that um, I've had this before with teams. Let me just check up here and make sure. to settings and have a quick look. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what I want. Just check on, I'll just go into my YouTube settings and make sure that they... Uh, the YouTube settings are all correct. Volume there now. Maybe it's my volume that's not working properly. 
Sorry, just let me fix this, see if yeah. I can fix this for you. I'll learn, I'm learning a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'll play okay in the LMS when you're going through. Mm, I think because I'm not using the LMS, so it's that's probably part of it too because yeah. I'm actually just using Articulate to go through this, Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No worries. So uh, for the purposes of this, that's okay. I'm just trying to get back to where I had... Aha, here we are. We're back to where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so this just, just goes through. But as I said, there is um a video for, um, and we do yeah. use videos throughout each of the, the yeah. um, things. So, right. and it might be that, like, I just clicked on here and it might be that it might be just YouTube being a bit weird sometimes. Yeah, yes. So if you click this one here, when you first look at it, it's very small. But if you actually click on it, it becomes quite easy to read on your screen. Mm -hmm. And then so we just continue to go through and um, cover off all the, the bits and pieces around health literacy and why it's important. And then we, we provide a number of tips on how you can improve your um, client's health literacy or support those with low health literacy and, and um, give you an idea of the simple things. It's actually not really hard. There's a lot of simple things you can do to support people. Just simply avoiding jargon is one of the first and, and the most thing. In the health industry, we have an awful lot of jargon and we have a tendency to just use it without thinking. And it really does, if you see your, if you see your client looking at you looking really confused, you can just think about what you've just said because it's probably not made sense to them. You've probably used um, medical language that they don't understand. So think about breaking it down into much simpler language that they can understand. And also, if you're working in a rural and remote environment, you might be working with people for whom English is not their first language. If, it's, if you're working in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, often English is their third or fourth language. So it's not it's not easy for them to be able to communicate with you in English. So having um, using medical jargon can very much um, make it even more difficult for them to communicate and explain to you what their issues are and for them to understand what you um, On what understand what you are saying. So here are just some typical words that may be used that may um, make it difficult for a person who, for whom English is not their first language to understand what you're talking about.
So I basically have five tips here for you and then a workbook activity where you are invited to actually create one of your own um, an own re self create a resource for yourself to use with somebody who has um, low health literacy. And up here in this one, there's some um, different in these ones that you can click on. There are some actual suggestions on different places where you can find health, health resources as well. And then we go to the quiz, which runs up that unit. And then at the end of the module, we have a final assessment. So the final assessment is um, made up of, of, of questions from throughout, on each, uh, from the, the modules throughout. And on successful completion of the final assessment, you'll be, we will issue a digital certificate and which the participant can download and they'll also get a digital badge which is a cloud-based uh, online um, recognition of what they've done which is portable throughout uh, Australia because it can be the can be accessed from anywhere and it also um, the participant on completion will get a unique URL for that particular uh, digital badge, which they are then able to share with their employer or prospective employer so that they, the, the person, uh, the employer can see what they've achieved as well. And this, way, this is much better than a piece of paper which can get lost or chewed by the dog or, um, you know, with all the weather that we've been having and the fires and all the disasters lost completely and, and then it's really hard to get a record of it. The cloud-based record is a great way of keeping it for um, the person forever and they can access it from anywhere just using their phone or their um, computer. And that basically is a quick overview of what's in the micro-credential. As you can see, it doesn't take very long to go through. It's very quick, very easy, and um, I'm hoping that you know you found what I've been going through today useful to you. If you have any questions, I'm going to stop sharing now, and we'll go back to my original screen. So this is where you can enrol this um, on this link, and you just click on the link, and it will take you to. the enrolment page over here this up here so you can share it oops lost it right. That's fun. I don't know where it went to.
No, I've lost the thing. I'll just try it again for the link and see if I can get it this time around. Ah, there we go. Found it. So this is this is where you go. This is what um, the badge will look like, and. Um, And all you do is click on get this course and it'll ask you to either log in or sign up accordingly. There's only, you only have to sign up once. So if you sign up for another micro-credential and then decide to do this one, then you don't have to sign up again. You'll just have to log into your account. Pretty much brings me to the end of our presentation. So if you want more information, this is where you can find all the information. You can scan the QR code and it'll take you to the web page, uh, which will have all three micro credentials on it. You can um, contact me um, via the info at checkup.org.au uh, email address and it will be passed on to me. Um, there are other people within the organisation that can also help you if you're having any trouble or you want more information. And that's basically it. So thank you all for your time today. Any questions? Just jump back. Is you going for taking us through that? Um, I do like what you said about removing jargon. Yes. Yeah, there's lots. Yes, so, it's very important. And I, I, I don't know. I'm always yeah. learning. <laughs> and, trying to keep and, up. and I have to say that I, it, I've had my nephew here from England with his girlfriend. Now, my nephew is Australian, so he's used to the way we talk. She's been absolutely blown away by the amount of slang or jargon that we use. Mm -hmm. And she keeps... She just shakes her head and goes, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's yeah. like a different language. So I think if it's like that for her where English is her her um, first language, imagine how it is when we start using medical jargon to people who have no idea and, they're they're, and English is like their third or fourth language. So then it gets really confusing. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think, you know, sometimes people can be overwhelmed or intimidated in um health settings mm. and mm. uh yeah using everyday yeah. english or language yeah. is great yeah, yeah. And, so sometimes the, nice questions. and sometimes the news that they get in um in a health setting can be quite um frightening to them and so they actually close down from my experience as a nurse um, and I used to work a lot with cancer patients and the surgeons would go in and give them and say to me, you know, I need you to come in because I'm going to be giving them bad news. They're going to have no idea after I've told them what I've said. They're going to have, you know, what, what the news is. They're going to have no idea what I say about treatment or anything like this. So I'm going to be saying it all, but you're going to have to be there to explain it all to them when they finally come out of their shock. And that's mm -hmm. so true. We forget mm -hmm. that. We forget that bad news actually causes people to actually close down and so they only hear a very small bit which might be the word cancer or the word heart attack or something like this and not the good news which might be that it's treatable or if they take their medication they'll be fine or something mm -hmm. like this which comes after being given the bad news. Mm -hmm. So I think this is something that as health professionals and that we need to be really aware of. Mm. Yeah, so true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that stood out for me. Yeah, and I, mm -hmm. I like the different and like interactive activities that you have. They're good. And and mm. they do um, help with learning. So interactive, the more interactive things are, the more people retain the knowledge. Just sitting mm. and reading or watching a video is quite often not enough. So being able to swap around and do various different things um, enables people to engage better. Yes. Mm. Yeah, great. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop recording now. Thanks, Jane. Thank you.
we will catch up soon. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.